请第五组上台准备。第五组为会计系何家恩、国际系朱敏君以及公管系黄志云。所带来的题目是 The Traffic in Taiwan and Singapore。Good night, everyone. Today we are going to uh, compare the traffic between Singapore and Taiwan. First, imagine that you're driving a car and look at your side mirror. Oh my god, there are so many cars piling up and trying to move forward as more as possible. I'm sorry, maybe you're in such a traffic jam. Then what would you do? Maybe you hope you can walk in on the high voltage wire? Or maybe you hope you can drive in a tank car and bump other cars off. So sometimes we thought, we thought that the traffic jam makes our road become a huge parking lot. In Singapore, we have lots of similarities. And let's take a look at how their government solved the congestion problem. Taiwan and Singapore, two major countries in Asia, they have both been called the Asian Tigers, and they are highly organized, with developed society and economies. However, both countries have limited areas. This results in high population density. With so many people crowded in limited lands, transportation becomes a big problem. The top three most frequently used transportation means are totally different. In Taiwan, we use scooters, cars, and walking. But in Singapore, they use buses, walking, and the MRT. Do you notice that? The top two of Taiwan are private transport, but no private transport enters the top three of Singapore. The difference is caused by three main factors, taxis and fees, traffic policies, and the politics. When it comes to taxis and fees, let's first take a look at the cost to acquire a new car in both countries. In Taiwan, after taxing, you have to pay 1.5 million to buy a 1 million car. But in Singapore, you have to pay nearly 4 million. Wait, what? 4 million? Sorry, dude, it's true. Among the taxes, the additional registration fee is what makes the car so expensive. Its rate is 100 to 180%, which means you have to pay the government the same price as a new car. Another heavy task is the Certificate of Entitlement. The COE represents the right to vehicle ownership for 10 years. Through bindings, Singaporeans can have it at a price of equally to a new car. This is the COE premium. We can see that uh, the price rise dramatically in recent years. It was due to the rising price of COE. Um, but what will happen without COE? Uh, the, car, the price of car might decrease and that leads to the numbers of car may well increase and plus that's more congested roads. Moreover, more cars means to more needs of parking, parking space and it will also generate carbon dioxide and that will lead to air pollution. So the COE is very important to Singapore. And about the traffic policies, there's the ERP, Electronic Road Pricing System, based on the PSU use principle. People are charged when they're passing through the ERP gate, and the price will vary from different times and roads, depending on the local traffic conditions. For example, at the site where the PIE slide road into CTE road, the rate changes at different times and reach the highest at about 8.30, while it starts from $1 at 7 o'clock. So through the system, high prices encourage people to consider the alternatives. However, the government used many ways to encourage people to take the public transportation. So maybe in 2013, the SMRT will be something like this. In contrast, what are Taiwan's traffic policies? Wait, what? We have traffic policies? Yes, we do have traffic policies, something like road expansion or propaganda. Especially the government likes to propaganda. Taiwan lacks powerful control over traffic, 
and this results from the third factor, the politics. Singapore has one party dominance, which means they have high efficiencies, strict laws, and low crime rate, which also include strict traffic rules. However, in Taiwan, we are a two-party system. They want to gain votes from people, so they have more opinions, which is good, but harder to execute the policy precisely. And finally, here's our conclusion and our solution to traffic jams. We can compare two countries, Singapore and Taiwan, and apply some some better, better, better policies in Singapore to, to which would most fit Taiwan and come up with two plans. Plan one is we, we want to charge the driver whoever passed the road which is in congestion. For example, if the road is clear and smooth, drivers can pass it for free. However, if the road is in congestion, we charge them from $5 to $15 based on the pay as a use principle. Plan two is to raise a is to raise a tax rate for the license. This would decrease the demand of the market of cars and license, so reduce the cars on road. To make our words count, we did a survey and received some response from students, people with jobs and no jobs, and people who retired. And here's our statistics. We can see that there is less than a half a degree, over a quarter of agree. And while plan two, there's over half of disagreements and less than a half of less than a quarter of agree. It's clear that when this comes to paying money, people often say no. However, if we look deeper into these two charts, we can see that plan one seems to be more acceptable. So let's focus on plan one. You can see that if we can change these no comments into agree, plan one might work. But the problem is, how? We take a deeper look into the comments they left in the back of the survey and find out that they want clearer policies with more details. For example, they want to know which road, how much money per time, and how do they charge. And the second one is supporting policies. For example, in the parking lot, better public transport system. There are many good policies for Taiwan to learn from Singapore. However, Singapore's effective traffic management is based on its high charges and one-party dominance. Are Taiwanese willing to exchange the democracy, convenience, and money for higher public transport usage? It is a problem that all of us should consider. Thank you.